Hello everybody, welcome back, thanks for joining me in this video. It's a pretty cliche entrance, isn't it? Uh, anyways, um, we're going to be making a cartoon shader today, and in two videos at least, I broke it up into two of them. So, this cartoon shader is great, you can do a lot of things with it, you can change the opacity of all the colors, um, you can blur it, um, there's a lot of different really cool looks you can, you can make with it, so I'm pretty excited. But on the first video, we're going to be go going over the basics of the shader, how it works, um, what's gonna, what we're, what nodes we're gonna use, I guess, laying down the basic framework, and uh, that's about it. In the second video, we're going to be putting it all into a group node, putting on the final touches, and making sure it looks as clean as we can get it. So that's about it. Uh, let's jump right in. So of course, when you open a Blender, this is what you're going to see. That's just a diffuse shader. So delete that and add in four emission shaders like this. I labeled mine primary color, shadows, edge, and highlights. I also gave them a couple different differentiating colors there so we can tell them apart. Let's, uh, let's start then by mixing them together like this. And then we're going to be adding in um, some inputs to the factor of the mix shader, which will then determine where the colors get placed on our mesh. So the cartoon shader, one of the hardest parts about it is getting the light direction right. And so one of the things that the shader uses is an emulated light source. So what we do then to make the emulated light source and have it respond correctly and react to the light source like what a typical light source is use a normal node. And what happens is when you plug in the normal output of the geometry node into the normal input on the normal node, the dot output of the normal node gives us a black and white map of the quote unquote light source. That was a mouthful. Whew. So, to give you guys a demonstration. I plug the normal node dot output into the color ramp input and then that output into an emission shader. And now, if I play this video for you, you can see here how when I move the normal sphere on the normal node, the light on the sphere changes. And when I change the interpolation on the color ramp, the light fall off changes on the sphere. So yes, and then for this shader, we're going to be using the constant interpolation, and that will give us the nice hard edged shadows that um, that we need. So that's about it for the basics. Uh, let's jump right into Blender and let's just get started. All right, guys, here we are in, in Blender. So let's get started. So um, everything's the way you just saw in the PowerPoint, and uh, we're just going to start making the inputs into the mix shaders. So first input here is going to be the shadow so just like we did before we're going to uh, feed that into a color ramp Feed the dot into a color ramp and then let's just see how it looks and feed the uh, the color ramp into the mix shader and I'm going to turn down these other mix shaders so we can um, see the effect a little better okay you can see we're getting some shadows let's turn the interpolation to constant okay so there, we're getting shadows. Um, now they're not actually shadows because the direction of the light in this case is determining where the shadows are, but we want it to be the opposite of where the light is is, uh, is going, where the light is shining because shadows aren't on the spot where the light is shining. So what we're going to do is we're going to just plop in a mix RGB, that to the factor, and then the top is white, the bottom is black there and now we're getting the other side dark and then we can use the um, the color ramp here to adjust how much of the shadow we want to actually be on our character cool so there's the shadows now for sake of organization I'm going to put these in a frame by hitting control J grab the frame I'm going to name this shadows and give it a dark color perfect so with that out of the way let's just copy this shift D and when you have a node in a frame like this just hit alt P and it will remove it from the frame so a little trick for you so in this case we actually want the direction of this normal light here to be where we want the highlights to be so we don't need to invert it so we'll remove that mix shader drag the dot into the color ramp and 
drag this into the second mix shader because that's when we're mixing our highlights. Cool, and in this case, we can add more highlight to our character. There, something like that. Cool. So now he has uh, shadows and highlights. That's pretty easy, and now you can see when we move this around, the highlights and shadows change respectively. Beautiful. So um, now for the edge. The edge um, is going to be a little unorthodox because what we want to have happen is we still want to have the normal vertex here to be used in the calculation of the edge color, but we don't actually want the edge to change when we move this normal sphere, if that makes sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in a vector math, wherever it is, there we go, drag the normal into the input, and then we're going to do converter, combine x, y, z, and we're just going to add a zero to the uh, to the vector. So we're just getting essentially this gray value here, which is a usable value we can use in our, uh, our color ramp. Oh, um, I'm gonna put this in a frame as well. What am I doing? Highlights and color that white. My keyboard is really loud. I know you guys can probably hear that really well in my mouse. You hear that really loud. My, my apologies if it is bugging the crap out of you. Okay, let's just drag and drop a color ramp in there. Put the value into the color ramp and drop that into the mix shader. Now you can see we're getting a terrible looking uh, edge. And that's because what we need to do is we need to add in a layer weight like this, hook the value into the blend, and then set this to Fresnel, which it's doing. And we should get then the edge of our monkey. Now, what I have set up here is the highlights to be mixed after the edge, which means that it's overlaying the highlight over the edge, so you're not going to see it. But if we did that the other way around, like for example, if I did this there, you can see the, the edge now is on the edge of our monkey just like that so that's how we kind of work around that because what's going to happen is when we add in the blur we're going to end up blurring the vectors um, and so we want the edge to be blurred as well and we can't do that unless it's being used in the calculation of the edges so it that might have gone over your head but whatever you guys will get it um, Okay, let's uh, give this a frame as well. Control J, call that edge, and set that to like bluish color. Okay, great. Now, um, one thing though, the shader right now is stationary. You can see the highlights and the shadows, they stay right where they are when you move around the monkey. It's just the edges that kind of morph and change. If you ever, if you've ever seen like anime or a cartoonish uh, episode of some sort, it's never stationary like this. It's not like it's painted onto the model. It's it's kind of dynamic. It changes as you move with the view. It's kind of almost like fluid. You know, it kind of gives it that artistic look. So what we do to to make that happen is we add in a layer weight. Oh, P. To um. To our color ramp here and then we hook facing to there and then we change this slider and now you see as we move around it looks absolutely terrible and that's because this needs to be plugged into the blend there we go so now as we move around it kind of moves and changes depending on where we're looking and you never really get the same highlight twice if you know what I mean we can just do the same thing then for um, for the shadows. Make sure that's facing. There we go. So now we have these kind of fluid dynamic shadows and highlights that are moving. And so it gives us kind of that liquid look when it comes to the, uh, the cartoonish effect. Perfect. So that's basically it. That went a lot quicker than I than I thought it would. Maybe I'll just do everything inside uh, inside this one video. <laughs> 
we'll see. Um, the only other things we want to be able to do is to change the opacity of the shadows and highlights and everything like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix the previous mix shader in a new mix shader. So this mix shader right here is going to be mixed between this mix shader and then the input to this mix shader, which would be the primary emission. Then using this slider, we can change the opacity of that shadow. Right, and the same thing for this one. We're gonna duplicate that. That's gonna go there. And the input is this edge and this one here. So we're going to mix then the previous mix shader with this new mix shader. And that will allow us to change the opacity of the edge. And then we just do that for one more here. Mix it with that one and the previous mix shader. And that will be the highlights. There, so we can make the highlights and shadows uh, much softer like that. And we can even take away the edge if you want to. And there, you just have a basic cartoon look. Now we're gonna really elaborate on this setup here in the next video. So. We'll see you there.